you uh, almost didn't have that relationship with uh, your dear friend Alicia Keys. <laughs> you, believe it or not, this man almost blew off Alicia I Keys. almost blew her off. It's a funny story. Um, <laughs> Um, because I produce, um, one of my producer friends, um, Prestige, he had told me uh, Alicia Keys, which was at the time was a new artist. She only had a single out called um, Fallen. I think that was the only single she had. Uh, oh, No Woman's Worth was the first single. Okay. And, you know, it was Buzz and this new you know, R&B artist, Alicia Keys. I was already with um, Jada Kiss at the time. He's a pretty big rapper. And he was like, you know, Alicia Keys is looking for a DJ. And I'm like, yeah. Cause I've been doing a lot of rap stuff, so I was right. like, maybe I should try the R&B, see the other side, see what's going on over there. So I prepared the night before, got you know some records together, a little routine to try to impress her. And that same day, they had a Nike party, and they were giving away free Jordans, um, free alcohol. Who wants to pass up Jordans and alcohol? <laughs> so we're at this party, and my my friend Lucky's like, he's looking at his watch. He's like, are you still going to the Alicia Keys um tryout? I'm like. Well, they didn't give out the Jordans yet, and they're still serving alcohol. I said, I don't know if I'm going to go. And he's like, well, what did you prepare for? You know, you got your records with you and everything. You should just go and see what happens. So he convinced me to go. So it wasn't too far. It was about five blocks away. So we walked, you know, up at maybe um, 8th Avenue or something. I forget. So we get to the studio where they're having the tryouts. And as we get closer, it's just this line that's just going all the way around the building. And I'm like, Really? Like, I left the party for this because I'm thinking it's maybe 20 people going to be there, 50 the most. It's like... You said there were 500, right? At least. The, they went around the building. It was like every DJ in New York City was trying to get that job. I guess word got out. You know, New York City is mm -hmm. New York City. So I get there, and as I'm walking by the line, I'm like, I'm not standing in this line. So I just, hey, hey, I see everybody, hey, I rock, hey. I'm just walking past everybody. So I go to the front, and one of my friends, DJ Scratch, he's the world-renowned DJ Scratch. He's like one of the best DJs to do whatever. He's in front of the line, so I can't go in front of him, so I went second. <laughs> so we gotta go in there, and to my shock, Alicia Keys is in there. So I can, you know, I, you, most of the time the managers handle stuff like that, so. That had to be a little intimidating. Not really, because at that point I had already met a lot of stars like Mariah okay. Carey, and she, like I said, she was on the come up, so it wasn't Alicia Keys yet. It was just you know okay. a talented artist who was you know looking for. She hadn't had done a minor hit, yeah, and it wasn't you know great talent, but it wasn't you know um, it was Prince. You know, it wasn't like Prince was in there, but she's at Prince level now. You know, oh yeah. So um, I definitely was shocked that she was there because she was real, you know, energetic. Hey, what's your name? She had no clue of who I was. Um, it was her, her management, about five people. And they said, there's the turntables, you know, um, do what you do. I said, okay, go there and I did what I did. And about four hours later, she called me back and said, you got the job. Which I was kind of shocked, not that I, I got it because um, DJ Scratch, I thought for sure he was gonna get it. That was kind of the only person I was intimidated mm -hmm. by because he had been doing it for so long. And he's right. like one of the best in the world to do it. So I was kind of, I think I just was more well-rounded with everything, where he might have been one-dimensional or something, but definitely a great, one of the greatest DJs to do it. And then uh, your journey uh, continued where you became uh, the warm-up act to the Alicia Keys warm-up act. And right. uh, that's a great story. T tell our uh, viewers how that worked. Well, um, we, me and um, her hype man, which is Freak Nasty, that's his name. <laughs> He's only about four foot one, or maybe four foot three, if that, and I'm six five, so you can see the contrast. I would play the music and he would dance, and most of her audiences are pretty young. So when we go to different arenas, you know, they, you know, they're with their parents. They don't want to, you know, all this bougie music and stuff. They want, you know, the party music. So we would always bring the party to every show. So we would get 10 minutes to, you know, welcome everybody, and then we would introduce, um, Acts like Music Soul Child, um, Donnell Jones, Floetry. Um, who else was doing? You know, different R&B right. acts who were also brand new at the time, you know, doing great music. And it just wasn't a match with what the audience wanted well, to tell, see. Explain what you what you would do before the warm-up well, we would, would follow you. Well, really, we would go to every city and play the most popular songs. So I would play the most popular songs, and he would do the most popular dances, because it's like this little guy who's like a, you know, he's only this tall, so it's like he's doing all these dances, he's standing on his head, he's running in the crowd, he's just 
Mr. Entertainment. I mean, I, I've never seen anybody entertain a crowd other than Fat Man Scoop that's just like, okay. you know, like him. So he would, you know, run back and forth and we do these little skits of, you know, he'd be dancing and his pants would fall down and just, you know, crazy stuff. Sure. And I'd be like, I'm gonna tell Alicia on you. And it just caught on real popular. We would have dance contests where, you know, that people's fathers would come up there and do dance. It just was entertainment and it kind of was more entertaining than the actual artist they were paying all this money for. So after about, I would say, 10 shows, they were like, we're spending all these money for these opening acts and they're doing better, let's just hire them for the open. So, so you became the opening we act. We became the opening act. So we went from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour to with the opening act for Alicia Keys, world tour everywhere. Yeah. Alicia Keys is on stage and it became a regular part of the show mm -hmm. that at a certain point she would be talking one-on-one -on -one with the audience and you would become a, a goof. <laughs> hey, right, basically. Um, that was her whole concept. And for, I mean that as a compliment. No, no, definitely. That was her whole concept for um, having me um, a DJ. First I was in the band. Actually, you know, we would open up you know, before the act. Then I would join her band and scratch in between right. you know, certain high, you know, fast tempo songs. Of course, the ballads, I wouldn't do anything. I'd just be sitting there acting like I'm doing something. But in between, I would scratch you know, and put different sounds in. And then her whole concept was she wanted the DJ to battle the band. So in the middle of her show, she would be talking to all the ladies, you know, the lights would be low, you know, real intimate setting. Ladies, how many of you have been cheated on by your man? You know, it's all this, you know, girl talk. <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear, and she's like, what is that? You know, it's like this, you know, I would do a big scratch noise. And she looked back, she like, is that you, I rock? And when the, then the big spotlight would, like this would be the turntables and I'm hiding behind it. So then I would come up slow like this and everybody would laugh every time, you know, it's like, and then I would act like I'm all cool. Like, yeah, it was me, what? Like, what you gonna do? <laughs> and she's like, you don't hear me talking to my ladies, what are you doing? I'm like, well, you were talking, the band was playing. I was feeling left out and everybody's like, oh, you know, like that. So it goes from there to, well, what do you want me to do, fire my band? And I'm like, yeah, get rid of them. All you need is me with the turntables and everybody laughs. So she's like, so you wanna challenge my band? And I would be like, yeah. So then I'll be like, but I need help. You got one, two, three. Now her whole band is like right. 10 piece band. I said, it's 10 against one, that's not fair. So I need some backup and then I will bring Freak out who's only like 4-1, which everybody remembers from earlier and everybody would start laughing. So he comes out like, so no, like that, so it's real. Real fun, and then we'll go back and forth, and in between I'll do different tricks, like take my shirt off while I'm DJing, and spin around and do different stuff that you know DJs doing. Really got the crowd hype, and then she would come back after about 10 minutes and say, well, who won? Was it the DJ, or was it the band? And we would do that every night. But then the band got mad, because I would win, every, we would win every night, sort of. We was biased because the, the crowd already knows us from earlier, so we were gonna win regardless of whatever we did anyway, so that was definitely fun. Now you told me a, a great, story about the night that Alicia Keys got her first Grammy. Wow, and the first five Grammys. <laughs> and she stood up for DJ Irock. That is a great story and it shows, reflects in your character and also her character. That no, she definitely. Did, that what was, she did, what she did. It was it was a shocking moment for me. Um, we were at the first you know, Grammys for her. You know, here she is, you know, her first Grammy. She didn't know how many Grammys she won at the time, but we were rehearsing and the Grammy committee kind of frowned on, um, I wouldn't say on hip hop, but I had turntables and mm -hmm. different element that they weren't used to because they were gonna do this elaborate um, um, orchestra behind her and, you know, and then here's these turntables and stuff and they're like, it's not gonna match in, we don't think it should be there and all this and um, she stood up for me and said, um, well, if I, I rock can't beat it, then I'm not gonna do the performance. And I was like, no, no, you don't wanna do that. I mean, no, it's okay, I won't be. And she was like, nope. She said, this is my show, my setup, and this is what I want, and that's the way it's gonna be. And I was like, okay. I said, you, I really don't have to be in it, but she stood up for me, and as well as herself, for her integrity of her music and how she wanted her setup to be on the Grammys, and I really did appreciate that. Now, DJ Iraq on national television, the Grammys. Wow. Crazy. Um, yeah, that was, that was a, a really big moment because at the time you, you know it's a big moment, but when you see that she actually won you know, five Grammys and not many people win five Grammys right. their first time out, it was really a big moment in history for me, but definitely for her. And, and it's a funny story from that too because the next day I asked her, I said, what are you gonna do now? Like, I thought it was not like it's over, but I'm like, right. you won five Grammys, like, what are you gonna, she said, 
what do you mean what I'm gonna do now? She said, I said, um, well, you won five Grammys, what are you gonna do now? She said, next time I'm gonna win six. And that just tells you her forward thinking of, you know, she said there's no level. Once you think you reach the top, then there's nowhere else to go. Now, you've been on uh, David Letterman, right. Jimmy Kimmel, MTV. Right. Wow, I mean, here's this guy that started off in the Bronx and now you're this national figure. Uh, well, what, what is that like? Like, you're going on with Letterman or Jimmy Kimmel, like, wow. Um, a lot had to do with Alicia Keys. We'd be performing with Alicia right. Keys and a lot would have to do with myself, with MTV. They were um, different guys would um, you know, DJ for Hip Hop Week. Well, um, I would go on there with Swiss Beats or um, Cassidy or Jada Kiss or different artists I was with, as well as BET. And it just, I mean, not to say, it just becomes the norm. It's like your job, you know, you wake up, you know you're gonna go to that sure. building. It's just a different building in a different city. But it definitely, um, when you look back on it, you really, at the end of the moment, I guess they say you don't really realize it in the moment, but when you go back and look and you're like, wow, I really, you know, did the Grammys. I really did, you know, David Letterman, like, you know, David Letterman. Like, then you think, I didn't do David Letterman in the past five years, so it's like a real big accomplishment when you get a chance to do stuff like that.